So let's sing together. to be by you. May this worship service be just that for us, that as we are grounded in your praise, as we are grounded in your word, that we might be lifted up to the calling you place on our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And we're going to keep singing a song that is really familiar to us. All right. 
right, so come on, sing with us. by going ahead and pressing that share button so that your friends know that you're sharing your peace with them and God's peace with them. And as you continue to find ways to share God's peace these days, um, I do invite any of the kids who are around to come on close to the screen. I do have a, um, a children's sermon for you. I don't have the story because this story is not in our Spark Story Bible. Um, but... I would like to ask you some questions, which is a little hard because I know you can't answer me directly. But if you're there and you want to answer me, feel free to tell your parents what your answers are as, you, as they type in the comments. But I'm wondering what the different names are that you have, right? So let's see, I know that my name, my name is Pastor Parker. You probably know that. 
My name is also Christine. My name is also Mom. And to one person, and unfortunately sometimes other people think they get to too, I am called Chrissy. But don't get the idea, so that's not really who I am. But to one person, they get to call me that, and that is my father. <laughs> and so I was thinking today about what are the different names that you are called? Because Jesus, in the story today, he wants to know what people are calling him. What do people say that he is? Is he, well, they say that he um, must be John the Baptist because he's so much like him, right? He has such power. He must be like John the Baptist, who was actually his cousin, if you'll remember from last week. Um, so that's easy to mistake. Um, some say that he's Elijah. That's one of the really powerful prophets from the Old Testament. Or Jeremiah, another prophet. Or some other prophet that he is like them. He is a prophet. And then finally, Jesus says to Peter, well, who do you say that I am? And he says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Wow. And so that is at the essence of who Jesus is. Jesus gets called lots of things. He gets called Jesus. He gets called the Christ. He gets called the Prince of Peace. Um, he gets called the Messiah, right? And so today, I want you to think about not only who you are and what fully expresses who you are, but who is God? And what might that have to do with each other? What does it mean that you worship God who is called Jesus, Christ, Messiah, Savior. Does that mean that God loves you so much? God loves you so much that no matter what name you go by on any given day, that you are set free and that you are loved by God. I'll answer the question. It does mean that. <laughs> okay? All right. I think that we should pray. Are you ready? Can you, can you repeat after me, too? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for sending your son, sending your son to, be the Messiah, to be the Messiah, our Savior, our Savior who, sets us free. who sets us free. Remind us, Remind us who you have made us, who you have made us to be. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Oh, right, great. I think we have another song. It's an awesome song. It's about, in fact, at least to start out with, one of those prophets that they thought Jesus might be. Yeah, the days of Elijah.
you two were getting up and dancing and on your feet, um, at least that maybe you were uh, shaken out of bed. <laughs> um, if you are uh, joining us at home today, um, waking up late. Uh, I am glad that we are able to gather here today for worship. There are a few announcements I'd like to share with you all. Um, not too many. One in particular is that next Sunday we will have communion. So this service will be outside uh, in the courtyard and you are welcome to come to that worship service. If you would like to come, then we invite you to RSVP by either calling the number that's on the screen or by clicking on the link that's in the comments so that you can say that you're coming. If you're not coming next Sunday, we particularly invite you to, um, to sign up to receive communion at home. You can receive communion directly after this service, so someone will come within the next hour and a half after the service ends. And so we invite you to um, click on the link for that as well and say that you'd like to come, or you can call the number that's on the screen, which is actually just the office number. Obviously, no one's in the office right now, but you should call as soon as the service ends anyway and just leave a message saying that you'd like that. It's really helpful if we have that information today rather than, uh, say, on Wednesday when we have to reshuffle everything to make sure that we can fit you into a route. Um, it just helps the people who are making all of the arrangements for that and makes that easier. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You can also sign up to receive it after the 1030 service, um, which next week will be the festival service. Um, so it's up to you to based on your timing, but you will receive it um, in about the hour and a half or two hours after the worship service that you check. All right, um, there is youth group today at 4 p.m. Uh, it is on Zoom. Uh, we had a great conversation uh, two weeks ago about what we were going to do uh, for our first in-person activity, and we think we might want to do um, miniature golf, which I'm horrible at, but it's really going to be okay because we'll just be so excited to be together again, even if we have to be apart from one another and with masks. And so uh, we will talk about plans um, and possibilities and to spend time together today on Zoom at 4 p.m. You should get a link in your um, in your text messages all right and at this time we turn our attention to the reading of God's Word okay good morning, good morning. a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans I appeal to you therefore brothers and sisters by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, and the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. 
I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord O Christ. Christ. So, who do people say that I am? In other words, what do people say about me? <laughs> That's a dangerous question, don't you think? Think of all the answers you can get if you start to listen to what other people are saying about you. Or, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Have you ever asked someone that? <laughs> That's something we usually reserve when the person we're talking about is no longer alive to hear the reflections. It is reserved for funerals. And then, of course, it is the best possible version of who that person was. If you're lucky, you might get to hear such reflections while you're still alive to enjoy them, and maybe even course correct if you're so willing. When you leave a job and people reflect on the good job that you have done there and celebrate your commitment and your contributions. Or when you graduate and move on to the next stage of life or those heartfelt thank you cards when you have made a difference in someone else's life. Or a gentle nudge from a trusted confidant that you could be doing better in some way. Or an outburst <laughs> that makes it painfully clear that you have some work to do. And as for Jesus, it is the Gospel of John that devotes so much attention to who Jesus is. Jesus is the Good Shepherd, the Gate, the Bread of Life, the Light of the World. Matthew, though, the answer is singular in this gospel. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that is supposed to be a huge turning point that finally he is recognized for who he is, and it's not because Peter's so smart. <laughs> no, it is because he has been given words from above, words from God the Father. It becomes abundantly clear, in fact, soon afterwards, as we'll hear next week, that he doesn't even know what that means. He does not understand the words, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This is about the only thing that most Christians then and today agree on as to who Jesus was and is. But what it means for how we are to follow Jesus is vastly different. Even Peter was not ready to really grasp what that meant. When he is told that it means that Jesus will suffer and will die, and on the third day rise again, he is unwilling to hear it, and he is called Satan, a stumbling block. But that's next week. Who do we say that Jesus is? If Jesus is the Son of the living God, the Messiah, what does that mean today? What does that mean for how we are to learn from Jesus and live our lives? Jesus, the defender of the unborn, purity, individualism, and prayer in schools, or Jesus, the champion of social justice, calling us to care for the least of these and to pay particular attention to those on the margins. We search for the heart of Jesus to confront age-old issues of illness and hunger and violence, but also modern issues of morality in science. Who do we say Jesus is? What is at the heart of who Jesus is? Jesus said to Peter, who do people say that the Son of Man is? John the Baptist, he replies. 
or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus says, who do you say that I am? Peter clearly answers correctly, saying what Jesus wants him to say so much so that it could only have come from God the Father. How do you want people to answer that question about you? Have you ever taken time to ask that of the most important people in your life? It can be quite inspiring. And if there is brutal honesty, also devastating. There is a Christian song back in the 90s, at least I think it was the 90s, I listened to it back in high school, that it's been running through my head this week, literally running through my head as I was running. I had this song running in my head, and it says, Tell me what's going on inside of me. I despise my own behavior. This only serves to confirm my suspicions that I'm still a man in need of a savior. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like the stars in the heavens. Oh Lord, be my light and be my salvation. Because all I want to be is in the light. By DC Talk. I'm still a man in need of a savior. Well, first, let's catch up and say, not man, of course, but I'm still a sinner, a person, a human, a child of God in need of a savior. That is at the heart of who I am, that I do not stand alone. I love these words because no matter how great we are or think we are, we are still ultimately human and in need of a savior. And that is who Jesus is. And yes, we should look to the life of Jesus to guide our words and our actions for those we stand up for, who we care for, serve, lift up, how we engage in the world. But we will never get it all right. We call out to God. I want to be like you. But let's be honest, I'm so not like you. But I want to be like you. And because you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, you, God, you, Jesus, you can make me in your image, claim me as a child of God, mold me in this life by the power of the Spirit. In the end, who are we but sinners in the need of a Savior? Children of a loving God. Siblings to one another, thanks to God in Christ. Many of us, I think, are asking what we should be doing in, these, in this unique time we are all living through. Everything's so different. What is it that we should be doing? What is it that we should let go of? How are we to be reshaped by God in this time? Who do we want to be and who is God calling us to be? May we, like Peter this week, point to Jesus, receive his mercy and share God's mercy through Jesus with others. And may we, may we be those who are wrapped up in who Jesus is. For God knows who we are and who God has made us to be. In the name of the Messiah, the Son of the living God, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. As you continue to reflect, um, I do invite you to listen to the music. Listen to the music you are about to hear about God's claim on each one of us. But then also reflect on what it is that God is calling you to do. Especially right now, what God is calling you to do with your resources that God has gifted you with. Know that we will use those resources that you place in the offering 
Uh, we will use them to show this community and the world that God is love. And so you can make your offering online at god-is-love.org donate, or you can mail in your offering to 4301 Rasp Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21206. You are also welcome to bring it next week to our in-person worship if you so choose. But whatever you do, know that we are grateful for the ways in which you are bearing witness to the God who is love.
testimony to your love and your grace in Jesus name amen. amen and now I invite you to join me in the words our Messiah the Son of the Living God our Savior has taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join us today at noon for a time of fellowship that you could greet one another and share some stories and hopefully a little bit of laughter. Um, and if you would like to join us, you are certainly welcome to look at the link that is in the comments. It is also, uh, it can also be found in your e-herald, the link to our Zoom fellowship. So please join us. And now receive God's blessing. May God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
today. And so now, go in peace and tell the good news that God is love. In word and deed, thanks be to God.